know what? I didn't check my. Hey guys, we are live for session two of SOAR. I just want to see, I just realized after I hit re, uh, live that I didn't check my microphone. So let me just check to make sure. Okay, we're good. So we're back with Alejandra and we talked about this week's session being about relationship with money. We all have one from our childhood. Um, from growing up that we take throughout our lives. And sometimes it's a great thing and pushes us forward to great things. And other times we have, you know, guilt around making more money than our parents or, you know, having them um, have a cap on who they think that we can be because that was their experience. So we wanted to come back and chat a little bit about that. So welcome back, Alejandra. Hi. <laughs> looks like we already have comments. So if you want to start chatting, I'll just check in on them. And I also want to, um, Alejandra did some worksheets for us. So I'm going to be busy trying to get that link up on the screen so that you guys can check that out and have that to uh, refer to. Perfect. Hello, everybody. I'm excited for tonight because we're going to get into a little bit more of the the meat and potatoes, so to speak, of what our two days will be based around. And so as Elaine was sharing, um, we're going to be talking about relationship to money, woo, <laughs> <laughs> which can either be like super awesome and you're really excited or you're just like, oh my gosh, that's the last thing I want to talk about. But to be successful in your career and to be able to soar and to retire, to actually retire, we have to focus in on, on money. Like it's just a part of it, right? So, um, oh, did I go away? That was me. I'm trying to make it where it's all on you and I made you go away. Sorry about that. Hmm. That's okay. 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 Uh, so before we jump in here, just disclaimer, uh, I am not a financial expert. Um, money is, is such an interesting conversation to me. I, I'm not here to give you like, again, financial advice. I want to talk about the relational side of money and our upbringing as Elaine was talking about, because really we carry so much baggage when it comes to money. And so what I'm going to be sharing with you this evening not only comes from my personal experience and having had a really tumultuous relationship with money um, in my early adulthood, I guess you could say, even up until the last few years. Um, and, and I've learned some things that I want to give back and share with you guys. And these things have allowed my husband and I to be uh, really successful in our coffee bars. Um, and I'm not really sure that I shared my bio last time, so to speak. So um, in case y'all don't know, uh, my husband and I own four organic coffee bars here in Southern San Diego. We're opening our sixth. Actually, we're gonna go into construction on our sixth one um, in March. So that's awesome. It's a multi-million dollar company. We have 101 employees. <laughs> Oh my God, I can't I even. I know a lot of you <laughs> are like, oh my gosh, Alejandra, exactly. Um, and then I've worked with over 1,500 clients throughout my coaching career, Elaine being one of them, this amazing woman whom I love dearly. So I've seen a lot of ups and downs when it comes to money, and the downs don't need to be what they are. And that's what I want to share with you tonight. It's like, what can you do to make your business and your life successful so that you don't make the same mistakes that, you know, others have, myself, you know, included in that. Um, okay, so there you go. There's my disclaimer. Um, Elaine, were you able to put up the link at all for people? I'm afraid to keep moving around on my computer because I don't want to make anything else go away. Okay. So I'll, I'll definitely do it before. Um, as soon as we hang up, I'll put it. People can come Perfect. back to the page and look for it. Perfect. So that link will contain um, it, detailed information from what we're talking about today. But certainly bring out your notes. You're going to want to take some notes with this because um, there's going to be some juicy stuff here. So 
uh, SOAR really was manifested from this place of talking about, you know, we really wanted to support salon professionals to be able to retire. It's one of the biggest things I think we struggle with. Um, and I had just had a conversation recently with two of my clients. Oh, Jordan. Yeah. That oh, that's perfect. Thank you. That's so awesome. Um, thanks, Jordan. Uh, two of my ex-clients who are uh, uh, hairstylists, one owned a salon. Um, the other one actually got out of it and is now a, uh, what is she? Um, interior designer. And they were talking about how if anything happens to them, that they have no nest egg. They have nothing to show for it. Um, they run themselves to the ground trying to generate money. Um, and, and I've worked with these ladies over 10 years ago. So, um, you know, I was sharing with them like, yeah, even not in the hair industry, professionals, just period, we struggle with this. Um, it's not like we're taught as children how to really handle money, right? Like, there's not that class in school, as there should be, uh, instead of maybe geometry, let's focus in on like money and relationship to it and investing and all of that stuff. But you know, it, it's not so we don't learn this. And we just jump into it with what our parents have taught us or what's kind of just passed down generationally, and what we pick up from other people. So in order for you to retire um, and, and have success, like the success that you want in your career, you need to understand money and how it works for you and how it works against you. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So the first thing that you need to know um, about how money works for you and how it works against you, uh, well, let me pose the question like this. Did you know that you are in a relationship with your money? Did you know that you are in a relationship with your money? So Elaine, did you know that? Yeah. And, and what I was thinking when you were saying that is I think that money is the number one cause of the downfall of relationships of divorce and, Ooh, you know, couple sure. issues. you know, I talk to different people and, and some couples have my money, his money, um, or they resent that the husband is spending more than they are, or the husband's resenting the wife is, you know, it's like an uneven playing field. And I think that's, that's, if you did a, a research, I think it would be like the number one cause of divorce is money because we're both brought up with different backgrounds in it and relationships mm -hmm. with it. So why wouldn't it be that would be an issue? Yeah, totally. Um, the sun's going down now. And so hopefully I'm not like, okay, absolutely. You're so right in that. Um, and it's funny that you say that because that, that actually leads into my next point around that. Did you also know that money is energy? Most likely you did like money is energy, but the specific energy of money is masculine. The specific energy of money is masculine. So if you have any kind of challenges with masculine type energy, then you're going to have challenges with money. Hmm. Yep. And it's something that most people don't know or even understand. But I, I'm sure in the realm of maybe education or things that you've heard online and in social media, this whole like feminine masculine conversation. And that's what I want to talk about because the feminine and masculine are the two determining factors of a successful relationship or not. Not just when it comes to your money, but like everything in life, your um, significant relationship, masculine and feminine, your relationship to your health also will have masculine, feminine relationship to money, masculine, feminine. That may not make a lot of sense right here in this moment, but that's what we're going to dive into further as we move along here. So the feminine and the masculine is really energy. It's energy that's brought into the relationship. And I'm not talking about female, male. That's not what we're talking about. Female and male are physical attributes. Feminine and masculine are energetics, not physical attributes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. So when the feminine and the masculine energies work together, that's when success happens. 
that's when um, you're able to soar. That's when you can't fail because those two energies are not opposing or working against each other, but they're actually working together. And everything being energy, these are actually the energies that we're talking about, the feminine and the masculine. Um, and Elaine, if any questions come up for you, if other people might be thinking about it too, so let me know, or if anybody, as we're going through this as well, if people have questions, because this is a big conversation, so it's kind of hard. I was like, gosh, what can I give you in like less than 40 minutes? But yeah, but already just knowing that there's a difference in, in energy, not being aware of it to be able to control whether you're leaning to the feminine or masculine, but just knowing that that's a thing I think is interesting. Um, it looks like people are just saying, hi, hello. I don't see any questions yet, so you're good. All right, cool. So moving on. So what are these feminine and masculine energies? I want to talk about them in general first, and then we'll connect it back into money. So let's start with the feminine. So basically the feminine is the receiver. It's also the creator and it's the process. So the feminine energy is all about like, you know, when you talk about in order to receive, you give, or in order to give, you receive, like the feminine is all about receiving. And this is something that I find, uh, especially women, we tend to struggle with receiving receiving compliments, um, receiving love even, um, receiving all sorts of things. Like we tend to struggle with this, but that feminine energy is absolutely the receiver. Uh, when I say it's also the creator, when you have um, an idea, when you have some kind of um, thought, you have some kind of inspiration, that's actually that feminine part of you that's getting inspired, that's really getting triggered. Um, that excitement is her creating, I shouldn't say her because it's not her, it's that energy creating that, um, that whole desire to create something. And when I say the process, um, the feminine is all about the details. So you know when you get like a group of women together and they're just all like da 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 da, and and you're like telling a story and the story is like has all these like clear clear details. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. what I mean about the process. So that's why women tend to like really just love to congregate and come together and just like talk because they're all about the process of things. Now the masculine is the provider. The masculine is all about results and the masculine is all about the outcome. So the masculine being the provider, we're gonna talk more about this, but um, think of it in a, in a man, female for a moment, male, female for just a, a minute here and like how, Back in the day, you know, men would go out and make the bacon, bring home the bacon, dear, like because that is typically the masculine's job is to provide and the feminine's job is to receive. And we're not I'm, I'm not like talking about like that. It, you can't be a woman who provides for herself. I'm actually telling you that what you need to have is both of these things within you. You want to have both of these things in your relationship with yourself and both of these things in your relationship with your money. So when I go to talking about the provider, um, as the feminine has this idea of like, hey, um, let's use this course as an example. Um, you know, I want to create this class. I want to share with other professionals how to actually work with money and have a healthy relationship with money so that they can retire. And, and it was like, yeah, let's make it, you know, very different from anything else that's out there. That was the feminine getting very creative. The masculine part then starts to go into, okay, what do we need to do to make it happen? How am I going to go out there and provide what it is that you really desire? Because the masculine actually really wants to provide. That's its job is to provide for you. When we talk about results and outcomes, um, the masculine does not care at all 
about the details or the process of anything. It just wants to know what's gonna be the end result of whatever it is I'm providing and you want me to do, and what is gonna be the outcome of all of this. I don't care, I don't wanna know about all the stuff in between, I just wanna know the end result. So for my women out there listening to this, if you have a gentleman at home that you like after a long day, you just want to sit down and talk to your significant other, let's say he is a, a male, and you're just like, oh, I want to tell you about all my day, and, and you go into the whole da-da-da-da-da-da, <laughs> and more and more and more details, and they're just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, so what's for dinner? Mm -hmm. It's not that they don't care. It's that the, that energy that is more present in the male is the masculine energy. They don't need to know all of that detail. I, I see this happen so much in relationships, just not relationship to money, but just relationships period where the woman is like, he doesn't listen to me. He doesn't care what I have to say. You're right. He doesn't care what you have to say because you're never getting to the end result. And I know that's hard to hear, but when you start to learn to work with that energy, wow, he will absolutely sit down and listen to you. You just have to know how to work with his very one track mind of give me the end result. Okay. Now, do men do men possess the feminine energy at all, or is it something they have to work towards because they're naturally born having that masculine thinking? Great question. So, yeah, the masculine have to work on their feminine side, and likewise, the feminine has to work on the masculine side. And what tends to happen is that we end up overcompensating for both. And we'll talk about that in a second, which is not healthy and does not work at all when you overcompensate. But you do have to work harder at it um, because it's just not natural. It's not natural for us. Um, but when we're talking about having healthy relationship with your money and a healthy relationship with yourself and your business, you need to bring these two energies together so that they're working together, not against each other. So what happens when you don't work together, when those energies aren't working together and this overcompensating thing starts to happen is what we call a needy feminine and a bully masculine. So what ends up happening with those energies is that the feminine starts to become very needy. So let's talk about that needy part of the feminine. Um, the needy feminine actually doesn't know her worth. And she overgives and overcommits. Um, she's in that place of like, more is better. If I just had more, then things would be better. So if I could, you know, get more, then everything would be okay. Um, she feels like a fraud or a victim. She needs validation. She doesn't know how to receive. She questions everything and she definitely doesn't know what she wants, but she will complain and blame not getting what she wants. So this one, oof, this is hard to, to be in this. Um, and, and I want you for a moment to think about money for a second. And do you look at money in this way? Is it something you feel like you don't have enough of? And if you just had more, then things would be better. If you do, then that energy is off and it's in a needy place. So you're gonna constantly be feeling like you need to be doing more, 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 more in order for things to get better, and it's never going to be better, ever, because you're not in a healthy place within that relationship with money. You're coming from a needy energy. Um, again, thinking about money, do you overcommit in your money? You know, are you like, well, I'll put it on a credit card 
uh, but it's like not anything that's towards investing in yourself that's healthy, like uh, investing in a workshop that's gonna actually educate you. It's stuff like, well, I'll go shopping and I'll buy something to make me feel better because I feel like a victim or a fraud and I need to feel better. And so I'll just put it on a credit card. It'll be okay. That's the kind of like spending that I'm talking about when you overcommit. Um, you don't know your worth. You don't know what the, the value of the money is that you have. And I don't mean the nece like necessarily the monetary value of like, you know, if I had a $20 bill that it would be worth $20. I mean, the worth, the value of what that $20 actually represents. Do you know that? If not, then you're in the needy side of things. Um, you don't know how to receive. So this one is, is challenging because, you know, beginning of the new year, we tend to set goals, right? We have all these lofty goals. Um, ooh, lofty. Lofty. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of our coffee place. <laughs> That's funny. So you have all these lofty goals and it's like, yeah, I'm going to make six figures this year. Or, you know, I'm going to make that uh, $100 average service ticket or whatever that may be for you. And it's like, yes, awesome. Um, but you can say that, but don't know how to actually receive that. Receiving is something that, uh, it's, it's really hard to explain you guys. And, and I don't think we'll be able to get into it this evening, but for sure, we're going to dive deep, obviously into this conversation during our two days together. Um, but receiving is something that you literally have to open yourself up for. And typically, especially when you're a needy feminine and you're in more of that energy, you're not going to be open to receiving. And so it's very hard. Remember we said the masculine is the provider. It's very hard for the masculine part of you or any masculine really to provide what it is you're asking for because you're not open to receiving it. And I'm th I'm sitting here thinking I have an issue receiving and I'm as you were saying, and I'm, I'm blaming that I lean more towards that masculine provider feeling and that that's, I don't consider myself in the needy category, but I, but could it be that I'm looking at it opposite? Like I've always, if I'm out to dinner and somebody else picks up the check, I'm very uncomfortable and I feel like I need to go buy them a gift or something. Like I, I feel uneven when yep. someone treats me because I'm usually the, the one treating or if we both split it, I'm fine. But if you treat me, I, I, even if it's just a cup of coffee, I'm just like, okay, now I need to send her flowers or something. Like, and and that comes from my mom. I know for sure I, that was modeled behavior. My mom has always been super, super generous, and always, you know, if we go out and there's 15 of us, and it's you know us kids and our kids, we're grown ass adults. We can pick up our own tab. My mom takes the check right away. And, you know, I'm the baby and I'm 52. Like at what point is she going to receive? So I kind of can see both in myself and I don't know which one I should be mad at. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know masculine. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, what am I fighting with? When we get to the next one, uh, I think you're going to be able to see the answer in that. But, but yeah, like, being mad at the the feminine right now in this moment, uh, but not to be mad at her, just a, an awareness of like, okay, so we need to work on the receiving aspect. Um, and the reason for that is because of the one we're going to go through next. Um, so let's go there. Let's talk about the next one. So the bully, the bully masculine. <laughs> this one's fun too. I know her too. <laughs> okay. So the bully masculine is the doer. Uh, the bully masculine is a slave driver. <laughs> it's the one who demands your time, attention, and validation. The bully masculine pushes you into things that you are not in alignment with or not okay with. It's the one that, like, when you really want to say no, but you end up saying yes, the bully is the one pushing you into it. The bully feels entitled. Um, and it doesn't trust the feminine to do what she needs to do or make up her mind. So he's going to do it for her. Mm. And that's where the overcompensation starts to happen. So 
imagine this if you don't have a healthy relationship between these two energies um in yourself let's look at it in yourself first because you have both feminine and masculine um and let's say that you decide okay yeah i want to make the six-figure income this year um that's what you've decided that's the feminine part of you deciding but because the masculine part of you has never experienced you actually knowing what your worth is like not discounting your prices or charging what you are worth in your uh, services and the masculine has also experienced you um, not being able to receive what he has provided so imagine let's say that the masculine has actually been providing for you again and again and again and again but you're just like no 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 or it doesn't look the way you thought it would so you say no and you don't even know that you're doing that you're just like energetically telling it nope don't need that don't want that that's not exactly what i wanted how i wanted it so you keep telling what the masculine is bringing you it's not enough it's not okay do you think that masculine is going to get pretty tired of bringing you like, here you go. Nope. Reject. Here you go. Nope. Reject. Here you go. Nope. Reject. Yeah. It's going to get sick of it. So eventually what happens is the masculine doesn't trust the feminine part of you. So he's just going to go sit on the couch and eat chips until you're ready. I mean, that's like literally, I, you know, I'm trying to paint a picture of like what's happening energetically inside of you in this relationship you've got going on with yourself with these two energies and that's literally what happens and that's when you get pushed into the bully masculine of like okay my masculine isn't providing for me so I'm the one the feminine I'm the one that's gonna have to go do it for myself and I'm the one that's gonna have to figure it out and make it happen and that's you guys when you become so exhausted and so um, just like nothing works you're spinning your wheels because you're in full-on do mode and in this bully place that just doesn't work it's so unhealthy um so uh there's so much more i want to say about this but elaine is this landing is it making sense to certainly a landing and to, and to bring it into the hair world i'm sitting here thinking of the amount of times that i see on the forums um you know people getting upset about something that happened with a guest and letting the guest walk all over them and then coming on to Facebook and venting and, and even with like a screenshot of text conversations with the client. And I'm like, uh -huh. we're going down a slip slope when we're starting to look to Facebook groups for our therapy, like understanding what you're saying and understanding our part in every interaction and taking responsibility for what created that circumstance. That's the biggest thing that I learned from you from the very beginning is that everything happening to you in any moment, we had a part in creating and that did not land well with me. I'm sure you can remember that. that yes. person, I was like, I don't understand. You know, one of my um, stylists didn't work out and I'm like, I can't believe it. Here I am again. I have to train somebody again. And you were like, well, what what part of it did you have a part? Like, how did you create this? I'm like, what do you mean? How did I create it? I gave her a nice place to work. I trained her. I this, I that. And then once I understood that like every action that we take causes a reaction and that's how we have a part in it. And even most recently learning that there's a slight delay in our action and the reaction that comes from it where we almost forget that we had an action a few days ago. It's not instant. So we forget that. And I was like, oh my gosh. For example, if I'm getting too deep here, no, when you say, which I, I do, oh, there's going to be no parking at this. I hate going here because there's never any parking. So me putting that negative thing out into the universe and saying there's never going to be any parking, there's not going to be any parking. Because way back when I got in my car, I decided that. And that's the energy that I put out there. And then that ends up being the result. So that's where when people think about the secret and energy and positive and thinking and all like that's really powerful and people think, how can that possibly happen? But it's true. I mean, it all, everything affects everything else from the littlest thought. Um, but like having the conversation with 
your client and saying, you know, when you're late, it really puts me in a spot. And da, 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 instead of going on social media and saying, can you believe she was 20 minutes late and then she didn't tip me. And, and then you have people chiming in saying tips are not uh, a given, they're a gift and how dare you expect. And then people start fighting and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this all started with Mary being 20 minutes late and being a shitty tipper. Like how did this conversation escalate. So now I love this. It all, it all makes sense from a, a hair perspective for sure. Yeah, it really does. And, and this is like that next level of understanding, like the whole law of attraction thing you were talking about and, and energetics, like the, this is that, that next level to that and understanding, but it's, it's, it's complex, but it can also be very simple. Awesome. Once you understand the, the concepts of masculine, feminine, and how those energies apply in your relationships to everything in life, your relationship to money, your relationship to health, your relationship to your significant other, your clients, your business, yourself, uh, that's when you start soaring because <laughs> you under, not only understand it, but know how to work with it. Um, I've seen some crazy, amazing things happen with this. Um, so this bully masculine um, is really unhealthy uh, because it is such a slave driver. Um, slave driver and can also be very lazy, like that whole scenario or image I gave you of like your masculine is sitting on the couch because it's waiting for you to be able to receive. Uh, so to come back to your question, Elaine, like which one should I be mad at? It, it's both because they're both playing a part in what's going on right now, you know, <laughs> of not being able to fully receive. And think about this again. Um, can we use you as an example? Sure. Okay. Because I know you've been on such a journey of, of growth and financially have started a new company, essentially, and you've done really well in it in this last year. But now you're going to that next level this year. And your focus is very much so on hair and staying hair focused and keeping your brand in that place. Um, because that's where the money is going to be coming from is you staying really true and focused to that. Um, but if we don't work on that receiving aspect, uh, it's going to be challenging for the next level to occur as easily as this first level occurred. And it may not have even been easy, but as easily because again, that, that masculine part, you guys, if you have ever made money and lost money or made money and not be able to hold money or um, just struggle making money, it's mainly because the feminine is not receiving what your masculine is providing. And the masculine provides many, many, many different ways. So even someone buying you lunch and you going, thank you. I, you know, I'm going to receive that. That's your masculine saying, hey, I want to give you something here that's related to our relationship and money. And when you say no, it sends a message to him that like, oh, okay, so then anything related to money, I shouldn't provide. So then you're going to have to go into overdrive to make this next level of business happen. Does that make sense? It does. And think about how many people cannot comfortably take a compliment. You know, you've seen it happen over and over again. Oh my gosh, your hair looks great. Oh my God, it's a mess. You know, they always take it to the negative. They can't just say, thank you. Yeah. And I think that's something that comes with maturity. That's something as I got older, I was less embarrassed to take a compliment and not feel like I had to take a shot at myself to make myself feel better. But I see it in younger people now. I was just with um, my girlfriend and her niece is younger and we were at the mall and she ran into, we ran into this Eagles football player. I, I could have smack dab run into him ran into his body and not known who he was because I don't follow anything with sports. She was like, oh my gosh, I have no makeup on my hair. Oh, I can't believe like this is what I'm going to run. And I was just like, I'm thinking I wasn't even thinking about that. I didn't look great or what I had. You know what I mean? And I think that comes with age that you get a little bit more less yeah. hard on yourself and a little bit more comfortable in your own skin. But I think God, I wish that we could enjoy it younger because that's when you really do look your best when you're, oh, when you're younger and people are, are trying to give you compliments. You can't, you can't handle it. Your face gets all red. You get all 
flustered and embarrassed. And it's like, wow, what's wrong with a compliment? Just say thank you. Yeah, receiving so important. Mm -hmm. So if you take away anything, this is a really important piece to take away from tonight. So if you don't join for the two days, fine, like take this piece away um, and keep it very simple for yourself. Um, receive what is provided. That means anything. So your homework, <laughs> your mm -hmm. homework for you. No, we became no. parents because we hate school. <laughs> <laughs> for the next week, until we meet again, is pay attention to what's being provided. It could be a compliment. It could be um, someone dropped a, a, you know, a coin on the ground and you are picking it up. It could be, um, oh, this happened yesterday. Uh, we went for a hike and the car in front of us paid my husband and I's parking. Mm -hmm. Like who does that? The guy, we pulled up to pay and the guy was like, oh, the people in front of you paid for your parking. Huh? Yes. Thank you. Guess what we did. We paid for the car behind us. Right. So it could be anything, you guys, anything that you just start paying attention to what's being provided. And it doesn't have to be monetary. It doesn't have to be. It could be anything. Um, just say thank you and receive it and see what happens. Start to see what happens. Uh, and hopefully you'll know that Alejandra is telling you that that's your masculine and feminine working together. And that's going to make things so much easier for your success to start happening. Okay, so last thing I want to just talk about is if we don't want to be in the needy, feminine, and bully masculine, then what do we want to do? What what is the healthy relationship between those two? And it's very it's quite simple actually. It's called the divine feminine and the divine masculine. You want to be in those divine parts of you. That's what makes it healthy. And when they're like they kind of like dance together, that's when magic starts to happen. So the, the divine feminine is opposite of that needy feminine. Um, she knows her value and her worth. This is in huge, especially because I know we've talked about this before, Elaine, but in this industry, she sets boundaries and holds her standards. The divine feminine sets boundaries and holds to her standards. She does not waver. She stands firm, no wavering. She knows exactly what she wants and she trusts. I know this is a big one too. Trust is huge for us, but she trusts the masculine to provide. Like no questions. Like this is the goal I've set and I know it will be provided. I don't have to do anything extra or create these crazy things to make it happen because there's trust. The divine masculine um, easily makes so something out of nothing. It's very resourceful. It's like you don't even have to think about it. Like that divine masculine can be like, oh, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this. It's like resourceful. Um, it's very single track focus. So remember, it's all about results and outcome, that masculine part. So if you start giving all sorts of details, it's very hard for that part of you to provide. Keep it simple. Um, it loves to treasure hunt. That, that divine masculine loves to go and find treasures for you in ways that like you never would have thought of or could have known. Um, and it always, let me say, like it always wants to give what the feminine asks for. So if you are in a relationship um, with, you know, whatever spouse, partner, whatever, I want you to actually look at that person as the opposite of you. So if you're a female, look at yourself as more fem feminine. And if you're with a man, then look at the man more masculine. And I want you to look at um, that that masculine wants to absolutely give you everything that you have ever desired. So if you're in that place of viewing that person as like, they don't listen to me, they don't give me what I want, um, you know, they never do what I ask them to do, I want you to stop and really recognize that you're not only talking about that person, you're talking about your own masculine 
energy in the relationship that you've got with yourself, meaning you view yourself and your own masculine the same way you're viewing that external person masculine. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so if you constantly are fighting and finding yourself in that conversation, they don't ever provide, they never listen to the, you're saying the same thing about your masculine and that's going to make it very hard for you to make any kind of money in your career because that masculine is going to be like, okay, cool. Well, you hate me that much. I'm just going to go sit on the couch and eat chips until you're ready for me. So use, I love using uh, real live examples of relationships uh, to bring into the conversation of how you're viewing your money and the relationship you've got going on with your money. And that's where we start to shift into getting you to be able to connect to your divine masculine so it can provide for you everything that you want and desire. Because it wants to. It wants to. Now, the last thing, um, I mentioned this earlier, but I just want to point at it again because it's so important. Masculine is the energy of money. So if you have any challenges with masculine, then you're going to have challenges with money. And it, it's it's the dominant energy in money. So we need to work on that. And that's exactly what we're going to be focusing in on in the two-day workshop. Woo! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question here. Okay. Do you find that you can be in the divine in the workplace and struggle a little bit in relationships? Um, so yes, you can be um, a little bit like I, I like that you put a little bit in there because typically, if you show up one place a certain way, then you're showing up the same way in another place. However, you can have more um, strength or feel more value or worth at work than you do maybe at home. And that's why it's easier to be in the divine feminine or masculine in, in one or the other of those places. So it can be, but typically they're, they're both there. So it, what I'm kind of getting from that, Anne, is that you've already got it in one place, which means you can absolutely get it in the other. Um, it's just a matter of finding out what's that one piece in the other place where it's not happening quite as much that needs to shift into the divine, either feminine, masculine part of you. I think that should be required. You know how you have to go to those classes when you get married? Well, in the Catholic church, they make you go to, it's called pre-cana classes and they have these couples come and talk to you, but nobody ever prepares you for all of a sudden having your finances lumped with this person yeah. that you love, but you could have two totally different views on money, on how to spend, on, you know, like for me, everything's always travel, travel, travel. He's more of a homebody, you know? So for him, when he looks at the end, the statement at the end of the year, he's like, oh my God, all this travel, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but that's what makes me happy where a guy might be into a muscle car or a motorcycle or, you know what I mean? So like having that, come together in a relationship and then passing it on to your children because they mirror your behavior and, and what your dynamic is. So it's funny because I always say my parents, the key to my parents' um, successful marriage for as long as they've been married is when you ask them who has the upper hand in the relationship, they both say themselves. <laughs> That's so and, and it's clear to everybody else that my mom wears the pants for yeah. sure. But like my dad thinks he does and she thinks she does. So they get along. Yeah. So it's like whatever works, you know, it's just um, what's important to you, you know, and just money can be such a where you live, how you live, what type of car you drive, where your kids go to school, you know, retirement, how safe you are. There's always one person that's more of a risk taker and one person that's a little more careful with their funds. So understanding all of that, um, you, you gave me a couple little wisdom nuggets about credit that I really didn't understand. And that's a whole other animal. You know, we, we get out of high school and we get all these applications for credit cards when we don't even have a job yet. Yeah. And they're happy to give you a credit card to smoke yeah. up when you're 20 years old, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, definitely the school system needs to change for sure and right. teach people real life skills and yeah. not, you know, like you said, geometry. 
And uh, Meryl, who is uh, going to be speaking about the credit and those little nuggets that I shared with you, Elaine, they came from him. So he's going to be a part of this. Um, and and I think we're having him in not he'll be our fourth live. Right. Yeah. Um, beautiful. So, uh, you know, there's there's so much more to this, um, obviously, and, and we're going to get so much further into it, but at least wanted to give you a little taste or teaser of what we're going to be discussing and give you also some tools to work with, um, which you have some homework to work on. <laughs> <laughs> That's just one little piece there, a little homework to work on there. Um, and and the yeah. download that you have the link to, that is what they're going to work on for their homework. It's like questions on there. Well, actually, that's handouts. Um, so it'll have more of the detailed information that I shared with you about yeah. like the feminine, the masculine, the, the needy, the bully. So there'll be some details on all of that. Um, Yep. Oh, good. Thanks, Jordan. There's the, or maybe you did that, Elaine. There's that one again. Um, so let's talk about how we're moving forward. You want to? Sure. So we were really trying to get everything together by the March date. And we realized that we just started chatting about the event in this group and people were starting to be interested, but not committing yet. Um, it was a, a larger venue than we really needed. And it was traveling for Alejandra, traveling for me. So we've canceled the original dates and we're moving it to April. It's going to be in Alejandra's hometown in San Diego. She can give you more um, details. You, you don't have the definite details as far as the exact um, venue or do you? No, no. The exact venue, no, but it will be in downtown San Diego. So if you're arranging flight, you, you just be flying into the San Diego airport um, and so as far as dates, when we meet, and it'll be before we meet um, next week, um, I believe we're meeting again on Tuesday next week, or is it Monday? I don't have it in front of me. So we'll make sure to get you the date too on that, but we're, we are meeting um, and we'll have the exact date for you. Um, and decided to change the pricing as well. So, you know, I, this is, this is that part of that masculine feminine that gets to um, play and, and dance together when you're coming from a place of, of divine, if you will. Um, and I'm at a place in life where it's like, and I think Elaine, you're kind of in this place too, that I, I want to serve. Um, I absolutely want to serve. And I used to very much so be in that bully masculine and it was all about money and like the, the bulliness of money, not the divine. Um, masculine providing. So uh, we decided to lower the price and do it for $2.97 instead of $4.97. So that's a huge, huge value to get to spend two days um, with myself. And Elaine's going to share what she's doing um, and our two other speakers. Uh, so that'll be awesome. I'm really excited about that too. And hopefully you guys are as well. Yeah, it's definitely the type of event that, um, you know, it's important to have a smaller, more intimate group. Um, originally, when Alejandro and I talked about the idea, I was thinking more of a hair slash business together. But once we hashed out the details, we realized that, you know, to be different than your ordinary hair show, it really didn't need to have any hair. So I am still you know, chatting about it, endorsing it, but I am not personally teaching at the event anymore because we're not going to be, we didn't want to confuse it and be like, oh, here's a hair technique. Oh, and here's finance. Oh, and by the way, here's the masculine and feminine and the energy of life coaching. So it's kind of more narrowed down. It's going to be a smaller group, more intimate. So it's going to be great, but we wanted to catch anybody because I had gotten a couple of people ask me, we're booking our flights. Where should we stay? And I was like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. wait. We want to see. We want to see about the uh, the different venues. So um, yeah, so April is better. It gives everybody a little bit of breathing room. A lot of people were panicking because um, it was so close to right after the holidays and everybody, speaking of finance, everybody's all you know spent from gifts and catching up on bills. And January is notorious in the hair industry as a slow month. So it's hard for people to yeah. commit to things. So I think the April date gives everybody a little bit of a little more breathing room and a little bit of a longer runway for Alejandro to be able to explain, you know, what it's all about and the uniqueness of the actual um, 
the actual workshop. So I had su suggested to her, I'm more than happy to keep having all of you on my page, but I want you to follow Alejandra and get to know her and see what she's all about on her page. So her and I are chatting now about whether to continue having the other classes right here, if it's easier for you guys to jump on here or if she wants to have it over there, but either way you'll get a notification. I'll make sure I send out either an email or a notification and we'll, yep. we'll figure all that out later. So. That's the beauty of the internet. We just have to push a button one way or the other and you'll find us somewhere on here. So <laughs> exactly. yeah, but we have a good crowd. We have about 40 people on here live and we're going to get more on the, uh, the replays. So let me just see if there's any more awesome questions. Oh, Mark's on here. Hi, Mark. Mark said Monday, the third, 8 PM Eastern. Standard oh, that's, Time. That's our next one. Yes. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> and Amanda says, nobody teaches taxes also. I know. And that's something that I think is really important because now people are doing the solo suites and they're not really understanding the ramifications of being a sole proprietor compared to a commission stylist. I think, you know, if you don't put that money aside quarterly, you can get a big surprise. You know, if people are used to getting that big tax check back, I remember in my high school jobs, I got a return at the end of the year and now it's like, you owe me, Uncle Sam, yeah, yeah. or uh, things that aren't measured. So you definitely have to uh, be prepared for that. Anybody else have questions while we're while we still have Alejandra and all her wonderful wisdom? Uh, let me put that up here. Well, while you're looking for that, so next week we will be having Jordan join us. Um, she's going to be talking about social media. Um, the do's, the don'ts. I know she's going to have some really juicy stuff for you guys um, around all of that because it's a it's another part of what we're doing in our two day workshop where you actually get to be hands on with your own social media with what it is that you're learning. So it's a workshop, like a real workshop. We're we're not just saying this is workshop and then it's not. <laughs> you're going to workshop it out. Um, and we have some really cool stuff designed out for you guys to be able to like, I know it's what I want. Like I, right. I can't just learn and be like, okay, cool. But how do I put that into my own social media? I don't, I don't get that. Like I have to, I mentioned this last time, I think, you know, I've, I've had this background conversation for most of my adult, well, and in my young life that I was stupid and dumb. And, and so it actually serves as a great gift now, because as a teacher, I can break stuff down so that it's more tangible and chewable and understandable and applicable to your life. Um, so, and your business. So she's going to be teaching us a little bit about what she's going to be doing in class. So, and, and honestly, you know, the, the, the gap generation gap with social media is very prevalent in the beauty industry. Um, you have the right out of school, um, you know, 19, 20 year olds who were born with an iPhone in their hand. They've been, you know, Googling and doing everything on their phone since they were at a restaurant with their parents when they were four. Um, so it's like so natural to them. And they're mm -hmm. surpassing all the people who have way more um, technical skills and experience behind the chair. And everything has just gotten completely crisscrossed in that world where people who are more experienced are like, I don't need social media. I'm, I don't want to waste my time on that. But it's almost like if you don't jump in and at least try, you're going to get passed by and you're going to be left out. It's a whole different world. I just actually saw a really interesting um, article yesterday on these gigantic malls that were always like the, the meeting place for teenagers and for us to shop and get that in-person tactile experience. They're like ghost towns and they're shutting down left and right. So now they're putting these little loft apartments in the second floor of a mall where you actually live in the mall in 300 square feet where it's like a tiny refrigerator and just a coffee pot because these millennials don't cook. They go out for every meal. You know, the whole landscape has changed because you can get anything on your phone. You can get anything delivered. You can jump in a car and be driven somewhere, okay. you know, and it's if we don't jump in we're going to be left behind. So it's, it's a great thing for Jordan to be able to help people who don't even know how to even start an Instagram account, let alone have a curated feed. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't have to be as complicated as we make it out to be. It's just 
having some sort of presence is critically important, whether it be Facebook or um, Instagram or whatever, you know, where your audience is, but you have to know your ideal client audience, where to find him or her and how to market it. It's, you know, back in the the 80s and 90s, you just had to have a license and show up and people showed up and got in your chair. It's completely yeah. different now. The so different. Is, is a lot heavier. So I hope you can see that through our conversation today around masculine and feminine, it's pretty different. And, and it's also different from the social media we're talking about right now. So when we say we're giving you uh, both aspects of not only like the intangibles, the, the inner stuff that creates the outer, but we're also giving you outer like tangible tools and skills. So this isn't just mindset stuff. Like you're going to get both aspects. And I just love being able to work with people's individual um, situations because, you know, I hear all the time, yeah, this is great, but my situation is different. Um, and so I love hearing those things and being able to apply what it is we're talking about into your life and your money and your business and all of those. So you're getting both the tangible and the intangible because you need both for soaring. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I'm just closing out all these things. It just popped up on my thing. Hopefully they're not showing on there. No, I think we're good. Um, so it doesn't look like there's one question. Sandy said, um, how do I find the divine? Oh, yes. Such a good question. So thank you, Sandy. Um, oh, God, I don't know how to answer that without like a <laughs> right Quick answer. <laughs> I know. So quick answer. Um, I'm going to give you two things um, and come to class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, find her there. Or how. Um, but I hate it when people do that and don't actually give you something. So I'm going to give you something, Sandy. But if you come to class, we'll, you'll get so much more of this because it's not, it's not just going to be this one little thing. Um, but hold set a boundary and hold the boundary that helps you find your divine feminine if if you don't set a boundary and don't hold it she becomes very again needy and lost inside of everything so um if you know what your standards are start with like start with work you know we're talking about the salon here so start with work and set a boundary there uh, several perhaps like okay i'm not going to discount more than 10 percent of my business you know don't say like i'm not going to discount at all make it tangible just say mm -hmm. i'm, I'm going to discount 10 percent less even you know and set that as a standard which becomes a boundary and then you don't waver when a client starts to like oh I okay I didn't realize your prices went up or you know whatever story they're kind of giving you you have to say hold with unwavering you have to unwaveringly declare and state like well that that is what my pricing is and and that's my set standard price and you know I'm not saying the conversation eloquently here but the example of don't waver on what you said is your standard. So set the standards, pick one area of your life, don't go like crazy on them, do something that's tangible that you know that you can hold, that helps get you moving into that direction of the divine. There's several other things, but that's gonna be the most um, powerful right now, yeah. And it does get easier once you start to do it, to continue to do it because you feel better, but you don't have the resentment of doing it out of obligation and not because it feels right. Yeah. Yeah. So true. And receive, do that homework of receiving. You're, you'll start to notice the difference with those two things, Sandy, for sure. Yep. So I think that's all the questions and we're right at the top of the hour. So that was great. That was a lot to digest. Everybody yeah. needs a big glass of wine and a <laughs> the divine after all of that. <laughs> but it's great stuff. This woman has really done a lot for me to change my life. And we actually were chatting before I pushed the button to go live that, you know, when you start to change and put boundaries in place, be prepared that, you know, the people that have 
had you, you know, do everything for them and bend for them. And especially in a salon situation, I talk about it all the time in my coffee chats. Um, you know, when you're always constantly being taken advantage of in the salon, you that's still in there. It didn't go anywhere. You keep stuffing it down and stuffing it down. And, and it really just starts to peck away at you and, and you end up getting sick or you have things start to hurt on your body because the body absorbs all of that stuff that gets pushed down. So once you start behaving differently, you're going to get some pushback, but that's okay because they're just used to getting their own way and they, they will survive when they don't. And it gets easier and easier over time. So hope says, love you ladies. Sandy said, thanks. That helps. So it looks like everybody um, had a great, great time tonight. So um, Monday the third, and again, we'll let you know whether it's here or Alejandra, give your page just so that they can go give you a like um, so they can find uh, you. I think uh, Jordan had posted something just a minute ago. I saw it. There we go. Yeah. That's Alejandra's Facebook page. So head over hit there when we hang up and either like or join. I don't know how you do it. Is your page open to the public? Yep. Okay, good. Great. So you don't have a friend or any of that no. stuff. Good. No. All right, cool. So between okay. here and there, you guys will know where to find us. And, um, you know, definitely digest everything that you heard and start to make strides in the right direction. This was fun. It was fun. Thank you. Appreciate you. Take care, guys. Bye. See you next week.